Welcome back to Cinema 4D's tutorial here on character um, modeling. Um, so we left off last time by creating this really ugly looking character. So I, I forgive, forgive me for even making you have to look at this person, but uh, this is kind of where we're at and, and there's a lot more tweaking we do with body design and facial features, but um, just want to kind of show you now the next step in, in making this character look a lot more realistic. Um, and we're still going to kind of stay uh, respective of, of keeping this low poly as well, just in case you want to put this into games or Unity or something like that. Um, so from here, we're going to just kind of start adding some, some detail. Um, so we, we just threw these spheres in here as eyeballs, which we could take a basic material if we wanted to. I just created a circular gradient and kind of played with the positioning of my of my eyeball, which is you know the pink and then the blue outer and then the black um, cornea part of the eye, and we could just throw this on our symmetry, and we would have kind of cat looking eyes, but we would have something that does look you know like eyeballs, good enough I suppose, and you know it already starts to look a little bit more real once you have real eyeballs in there, but show you how to make this look a little bit more realistic. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to get a, I'm going to start over here. I'm not going to delete my symmetry. I'm just going to get rid of my sphere and add a new sphere, um, which I'll put inside the symmetry. And I'm going to scale, it comes in way down here. I'm going to scale this way down. And I'm going to get rid of the material on it. So, we're going to make it editable and actually I need to be outside of symmetry to start. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into our hidden lines and we are going to rotate this object so that we get the top of the sphere facing us and facing outwards towards the front of the face. Um, so what we need to do is create three different materials that we use to create our gradient. So the first one we're gonna create kind of this barely pink um, color here. We don't want him to look cracked out, but you know, something, something like that, we're just gonna throw on the whole eyeball. So if I went back into my regular shading, I now have my whole eyeball that color. Um, and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna kind of flatten the front of this a little bit. Um, have select only visible elements turned on and we're just gonna actually take this whole inner area and just kind of flatten it down a little bit something like that and then I'm gonna take the inner area and I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger something like that and there's obviously probably better ways to do this but this is what we're gonna just just go with um, for, for a basic eyeball. So uh, let's just drag this out and duplicate this material. We're gonna start with the, the cornea and then we're also gonna drag it out again and we're gonna make this, this character have blue eyes. We'll just pick a really vibrant blue. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the outer part of the eyeball here crudely. stuff and then oops make sure I have that selected drag our blue on and then let's select the inner part and drag our black on so we've completed the eyeball let's just go back to regular shading and we can see kind of what this eyeball is is gonna look like doesn't look good yet um, bear with me here so let's scale this thing down a little bit and now let's add it into our symmetry and let's position this sucker more where we want it to and now we've got a much more realistic looking set of eyes on our character we can play with the position all we want obviously this is pretty dilated so something like that. Um, so if we just do a quick preview, that's starting to look a lot better. 
still doesn't look very realistic just because the whole of the character is still this ugly gray. But let's just go ahead and throw a material, create a new material for the skin. Skin, we want it to be more of a pinkish kind of hue. So we'll go something like that. Um, in the case of creating this character, we could do that for a white dude. If we wanted it to be an African American, we could kind of just scale this back a little bit from that pink hue, make it a little bit darker. And now if we render it, we're starting to get a more, slightly more realistic looking, looking result. Um, and now, you know, there's a lot that we can still do to our character, but at the very least, you know, if we kind of put this into a realistic looking scene and render it out, it's starting to look a little bit like a humanoid. Um, so next what we'll do is we're gonna mess with the character's hair a little bit. Um, usually you should wait to do that last so that you can make editable your subdivision, your symmetry. Um, but I'm not gonna go any further on editing this character, as even though we should. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do that. We'll just go ahead and make editable our character. And now we'll see when we look at the cube, a whole lot more polygons kind of smoothing out our character. So to create our hair, we're gonna grab our live selection. I'm gonna up the radius on this a little bit. And we're just gonna paint all over the character's head where we would want hair to be. Um, what I probably should have done first, I'm actually gonna back up. Before I make it editable, I'm just gonna add some, some ears to this character. So nothing crazy here. I'm just gonna pull out a little section and then scale it up a little bit. Yeah, a lot bit. And we'll just start, start from there and then we'll do an extrude inner, just one subdivision and apply it. And this inner I'm gonna scale way down and just kind of make the ears a little bit more concave, but pretty, a pretty basic looking ear. I'm not gonna do too much with it other than maybe not make it look so robotic. Um, obviously the ear is gonna be a little longer in the front Maybe we'll just kind of angle it back like that just to make it look a little bit more realistic. You could also come in here and take this front, uh, some of these front facing polygons and rotate it a little bit, just a little bit, eh, something like that to make it look a little more realistic. Um, again, not perfect. We'll take this top point and kind of pin it back a little bit more to the head. So good enough, we'll leave that character as is. And placing the ears there gives a good idea of like kind of where to start the hairline. So let's go back to making this editable and coming in here, making sure our cube is highlighted grabbing live selection, let's get that radius way back up. And let's start painting where we wanna have hair. And this is not gonna be perfect. We're gonna actually add, uh, add to this as we go along. But just give it a basic kind of area for where we want hair to be. And yeah. So something really basic like that. Now we could just, you know, if you wanna have like a buzz cut, just add a different material right now, but we're gonna add some kind of low poly hair to this. So uh, we're gonna go into um, our simulate, hair objects, add hair. And what's gonna come in is gonna be way too many hair 
objects. If you were to render this, it obviously looks terrible. And as you start thickening things up, your render time is going to go way through the roof. So first thing I like to do is just go into, oh, let's see. Uh, go back, go into our hair, and let's lower the count down to something like 300. And let's also make sure that our hair count is somewhere around 300. And let's take a look what this looks like. Not much to it. Uh, we're going to open up our hair material, and we're going to play with the thickness. So we're going to go something like I don't know, 20 and 15 for the tip. Something like that. All right, pretty toony, but all still kind of stuck up. The other thing we're gonna make sure we do is under forces, we're gonna get rid of, I'm just gonna get rid of gravity for now. So that way, that way when I play, my hair doesn't all fall into place. Um, now what you could do is you could leave the gravity at minus nine and lengthen out your timeline and kind of let it fall and start at a different place with shaping the hair. So, um, you know, we could do something like this and starting at this point, we could shape the hair and now we could get rid of our gravity. Oh, that's interesting. It actually goes right back up to static mode. So that's not gonna work. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it here and I'm gonna use a tool under simulate hair objects or hair tools called the brush tool. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you just kind of play with the radius and just kind of start combing hair around just like you would if you were getting ready in the morning um, and somehow you woke up in the morning having hair that looked like that. There's certainly days that I do look like this in the morning. Um, but we're just going to quickly just kind of show you how this works. Just brush, brush the hair around, taking on different angles. Just kind of give it this weird, like, sort of mad scientist look. A little wave in the front, maybe. And then we're going to kind of brush it all, brush it all back a little bit, too. Um... Nothing, nothing crazy. Give it a little preview. And then the other thing you'll notice is that the um, hair is super long and the same length in all different parts of the head. So we're going to do that. We can go back to our hair tools and we can do the cut tool. And we can actually just shape this head a little bit more like a normal looking sort of haircut, just bring all these hair objects down. Some more of like a shorter style here. And you'll see we're starting to get this very suave looking hair. Yeah, so that's that's one way to, to create hair objects. Um, but you are creating quite a bit of polygons, even with only a 300 hair count. So there's still a lot going on there. And, and maybe you want to create something a little more dynamic than these just these flat, weird looking shapes. Obviously, we could play with our specular a little bit and get rid of that. Something a little bit more normal looking um, there's also places I can see on my head where I'm missing uh, hair best place to see that is just go directly above the head and you'll start to see all these gaps so what we can do there is we can go into simulate and we can add guides and we can just say I'm just gonna do a smaller radius and I only want to add like four um, so I'm just gonna 
kind of find these bald spots and start to add just a couple more hairs. And you'll see as I do that, it starts to fill it in a little bit. Now obviously we have to go back and brush these brush these into place. So that's just kind of using the same process or the normal process of creating hair. Um, we could play with the thickness a little bit so you can see more of the hair. We could add some, some frizz to this, Let's give it a little bit more of its own crazy style. Uh, we could add some kink to it, which, uh, the roots get a little bit, or the tips get a little bit crazier. And yeah, we probably wanna get those tips to be a little bit smaller so that when they protrude, they look a little more natural. So yeah, something like that. Um, but we could also create our own, um, our own hair, uh, which is a good tool for, you know, creating smaller, uh, Fewer polygons, especially like I said before, if you're going into Unity, it's a good tool to to use. And so we could create something like a capsule, and to give it kind of this low poly look, I could take the fong tag off, and we can you know, make the segments much smaller, something like that. Two, two, and twelve. I might even go eight. Yeah, something like that. And we'll kind of play with the size of it. Maybe make it a little bit longer. And then what we can do is in our hair, under guides, um, we can, sorry, under hairs, we can create um, our own instance of hair. Uh, so, Sorry, it is actually under generate instance. And in that instance, we can take the capsule and just drop it in there. And then we want to take rem uh, render hairs off. So we're not actually rendering the hairs and then we'll keep texture on. So that way we can add, you know, let's say we want to add like a, bl a bl funky blue material to the capsule. And we're not seeing anything. Ah, there we go. So I had to just turn, make sure the capsule was editable. Um, and now I've got this really funky looking hair that is, uh, is kind of cool. Um, and it gives my character a very toony kind of look to him. Now I turn back on the render hairs. I'm gonna turn that off so I don't see the original hairs. But now we've got this kind of cool looking funky blue hair style. Matches our dude's blue body. And now we're starting to actually see a more realistic looking character. Um, I will just kind of go the simple route here and just add some clothing so he doesn't look bare, bare naked. Um, so let's go into our front view and let's just let's do something really basic. We'll just go up to the up to the edge of the arms here. Make sure that uh, only select visible uh, uh, elements is off. Let's turn this way up. Holding down shift here, just kind of working my way across. Go to the edge of this hand here. And then work my way across the torso. Oops. And then I will reduce the size here and just kind of clean up the where I want this t shirt to end. That's too low. Yeah, I probably want it to end somewhere, somewhere in there. And let's just go ahead and, I don't know, let's, let's go with blue. Something simple like that. Let's come back into our character. 
And there's kind of a shredded looking t-shirt here, which once you actually bake the object, these lines kind of become a lot, a lot less pronounced, which we are eventually gonna do. So don't worry about that quite yet. Um, and then we'll come back into the character and let's just kind of overlap a little bit. Let's create some, just some basic black colored shorts. And I missed a little spot here. And let's come back in. Yeah, we'll just leave that as is, whatever, right? Um, keep him barefoot for now, although he kind of looks like he's wearing brown boots. Um, so we would probably want to make toes for for the feet there, but it's too late, I already made it edible, so we'll just leave it as is. Um, so we've got a basic, a basic looking dude here that's ready to be rigged. So the next tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to take this character and rig it up.